right. You caught me in my kitchen working at Chef Celeste Bistro. This one is in Neuro Med, but you already know the other one is downtown Baton Rouge. Well, um, on the show today, I have an interview and I'm cooking with Wazel Williamson. And yes, that's my phone ringing while we're doing this. And we have an interview with the Commissioner of Agriculture. Welcome to Southern Exposure. me in the kitchen. I'm at Chef Celeste Bistro inside Neuromed and you know I already have one downtown in Baton Rouge in the farmer's market so check out either one of those. You're watching Southern Exposure and I'm cooking today with the Commissioner of Ag and we're cooking catfish and of course you know it's U.S. farm raised catfish so that's some good stuff that we're going to be cooking up in the kitchen. And I'm in the kitchen with Wisell Williamson and he's going to create a few healthy dishes that I know you're going to love you're watching Southern Exposure. Folks, this is going to be so easy. We're going to do pumpkin seed crusted catfish. Now you can use pecans, whatever you happen to have um, that you like, but it's going to be nice, simple, and festive because what I want to do is add something different to your holiday tables, whether, no matter what holiday it is, I want to add something different. So this is what you're going to try. You're going to roast off your seeds, and then you're gonna chop them like this here. And I'm gonna add a few more seeds in here just, just to, yeah, no, okay. chop, chop, chop. You know chop. what I like to say, chop like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and then in my bowl, I'm gonna walk behind you, Commissioner. I am going to grab some fillets of catfish. Actually, I'm gonna put some egg in here first so I don't have to reach over you. So let me just stir up a little bit of egg. The egg is gonna be just a binder to help all of my seasonings adhere. So. While you're doing that, I'm gonna reach over. Okay. I'm gonna put maybe four fillets in here. I think four would be good. And then, grab that. And we Spread already that baked around. these seeds. Yeah, the these seeds are already baked seeds. off. So you see how They're easy nice that is? Crunchy. This is about two eggs in here. So now I'm gonna add some more seasoning to it. I'm gonna add a little bit of garlic. Now you notice I'm using my dry hand now. You don't want to go into your seasoning mix or anything else with the wet hand because it's going to stick to that particular hand. I'm going to add a little bit of tarragon in here. Add some cayenne pepper in here because I like it. Not as much as you use, but I'm going to add that. I like yep. it hot. Yes, you like it hot. Then we're going to add some Cajun seasoning in here. There you go. Nice, simple ingredients. Um, I want you to chop up. Can you chop some garlic? I love I to use fresh garlic. You can use granulated. Well, I do have granulated garlic in here too, but we're going to add Good. fresh. Okay, so you ready? Now I'm going back in with the wet hand. There you go. Just mix that around real quick. Add a little bit of flour just to coat. My pan is nice and hot with some olive oil, but I'm going to add a little bit of butter. Okay. How are you looking good. over there? We're looking good. Okay, can I get okay. some cornmeal in here? There you go. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay. Can I have some seeds? You're, yes. you're done? Your seeds are done? Yeah, my seeds are done. All right. Now, this catfish is not going to take long to cook up at okay. all. A little more. Yeah, let me have all of it. A little more. Yeah. Yeah. There you let go. me have your garlic. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's going to be great. Nice. I like okay, that. Okay, very good. So now I'm just going to toss that around. Mm -hmm. Get a nice summer. coating. Yes, we got all of it in there. A nice coating of everything on here. And you move that around, pull it pan so I have oil everywhere. We're going to go flesh side down. There we go. Now take a look at that. Flesh side okay. down. Flesh side down. And away from you so that you're not splashing onto yourself. Okay. All right. Put that in there, Commissioner. That's beautiful. Simple as that. Okay, and Let that cook on medium. You don't uh -huh. want it on high because you don't want the nuts to burn. I'm going to get that pan of catfish in the mm -hmm. oven. We topped it off. You want to go ahead and put that okay. in the oven for me? We'll do. We topped it off with some shrimp, lemon juice, and a little bit more of our chopped pumpkin seeds. And we're just going to let that bake off while we do our next dish, which the next dish is going to be our cream 
catfish. It's gonna be creamed with spinach, oh. topped with crab meat, all the, all the good stuff that we like here in Louisiana. So I have the butter going. Okay. I'll add some garlic in here for me. Yes. How much? All of it. All of it. Yeah, we like garlic, so let's put all of that in there. Yes. Ooh. So we'll move this out of your way okay. real quick. And that was about three and a half, four pods? Right, right. Three to four pods. More if you like more. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna let that go. Let me have the um, crab meat. Crab meat? Yes. Oh, that's some nice crab meat, crab meat in here. Okay. okay. All of it? You gonna put all of it in there? Half yeah. of it. Half of it. Half of it. Yeah. Okay. Let's, half. Let's see, about half of it. Yeah. There we go. That works. Okay. Now, let's move this around a little bit. Okay. Heavy cream. Uh, heavy cream. Heavy cream. I'm gonna put about two cups. About two and cups, just kind of filling yeah, it out. We need to okay. fill it out there. We have the spinach. Okay. How much of your spinach? We're gonna put a cup of spinach in there. I don't want a lot of the liquid, so okay. let me do that. Give that a quick stir. Let's move that out of here. Okay. Good. A cup of spinach. Shake that up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Now I'm gonna go for my seasonings. And you notice I have not put the catfish in here yet because catfish is gonna cook quickly. So I'm gonna add some granulated garlic in here also. Oh, that's nice. That's about a teaspoon. We're gonna put some okay. salt. We're gonna put two pinches of salt in here. We're gonna add a little bit more tarragon. Of course, you know I'm going for the Cajun seasoning. A little Cajun seasoning. Yeah, there gonna you add go. that in there. There you go. You want some heat? A little bit of heat. Okay, we're gonna add some heat. There you go. Little? There. Uh, okay. There you go. Now you're there. Okay. And Stir that around for a okay. bit, Commissioner. Right. Now, what I want you to do, yes, take your catfish, okay, and lay it about five pieces in the bottom of the pan. Okay. Well, these are some really nice, yeah, catfish, U.S. catfish. Okay, we may get three in that pan, but mm. I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Let's okay, get that in there. All right, we have three Let's in the bottom with a little bit of feta cheese. Okay. I can't wait till this comes out of the oven yeah, already. Good. Yeah. Now, I'm going to do a pour on okay. here right. so that we can um, okay. get this in the oven. So take a look at this, folks. Got the catfish on there. You're going to pour your mm. nice crab sauce on top of there. Mm -hmm. Let's pop that in the oven. It's going to take about a half an hour okay. in the oven. And all of that flavor is just going to get into that catfish. And when we come back, you're going to see how good it is. Go ahead, you can put it in. Put it in the meantime, I'm just going to put some in the skillet since we have some of our sauce left over. So I'm going to turn this back on, and I'm going to show you how quick and easy it is to do on the stove top. So for those of you that you may not want to turn your oven on, it's OK. We got you. We're going to put some of that on here. And show you how nice um, now, I'm still putting this flesh side down. That's just the way I like to cook it. It cooks up faster that way. And we're just going to let that go. Now, it's going to be on a medium heat. You okay over there? I'm good. We're gonna I'm put good. It on we medium have an oven heat. full. Mm-hmm. Oven is full. But when you're making a nice meal like this here, you're going to have a lot of things all at one time. So timing is really important. So whatever takes the longest, that's what you're gonna do first. So that's why we have, you know, the order that we have going on. Okay. What have we here? We're gonna make some catfish tacos with our U.S. farm raised catfish because who doesn't like to snack while you have all of this going on? So since these okay. take time, basically what I've done, you ready? I am ready. Okay, I I'm can ready. Yeah, you can gonna, tell that, huh? I'm gonna tell them you what we did that, so huh? far. <laughs> I, I took one of the catfish fillets, put a little bit of oil in here, a little bit of garlic, and put it in here. And basically, I just kind of broke it up while it was in the pan. So, nice and simple. We're going to take our tortillas here. Okay. Let me turn this off. And I'm going to heat your go. tortilla up a little bit. I'm going to put it this side down because we're not using napkins there you right go. now. We're just going to pick it up, let it warm for a minute. Okay. You want some quinoa in there? I do. You can use salsa. You can use whatever you, you have on hand. I'm going to put a little bit okay. of catfish down there for you. Okay. Let me take a scoop. I don't want to put the fish in there with that. There put you that go. On there. You want some cheese? I do want some cheese. Okay, add some cheese on there. Add a little bit of cheese on there. We're ready All to go, right, right, folks, we got U.S. farm raised catfish. Catfish tortillas. Tacos. Baked catfish. Look at that. That is incredible. That looks amazing. That is then incredible. Then we have our, that's going to pair with some spaghetti and all the good things that you need for the holidays. Then this one here is. It was baked. It was baked. 
We top that off with a little bit more of our spinach and cheese and it just all that good stuff. And but, here you combine that with some wonderful gulf court shrimp. Yes, and some pumpkin seeds. So you roast that off, you can use pecans. Mm -hmm. It's nice, folks, it's simple. Whatever the recipe, let me, I'm gonna make you a plate. Whatever recipe you choose Absolutely. to use, just make it nice, good, and delicious. And so. you can get all this information at our website, cookinguplouisianatreasures.com. Yes. Go there, take the survey, you can look at all the different episodes, mm -hmm. and you can get these recipes. That's right. And it's so nice and easy and Thank simple. You. So basically what we want you to do is try something new. Get you some potatoes, get some of all Thank that you. good stuff. I'm gonna break you off a piece absolutely. of this catfish. I've been Folks, waiting on that look too. Look at that. That looks absolutely So clean amazing. catfish. Yes. Right? With lump crab With meat lump crab and meat. cheese mm -hmm. and mustard greens. Mm -hmm. And don't forget, the what, 30 second fish tacos? So, you know what, that's what mm -hmm. I want right here. The, the taco that I did not get a chance You did to not, eat. I ate the first one. We'll see you next time. So, so I think there's um, something you don't know about me yet is that my first name is actually Benji. B-N-J-I, -N -I. not right. Benjamin, but it's Benji. Right. Um, my mother named me after that Disney dog from the 70s because uh -huh. she fell in love with that movie. Well, <laughs> so my full name is Benji Wazell Williams, but I go by Wazell. All right, Wazell. <laughs> now, folks, welcome back to Southern Exposure. And you heard that we are talking to Wazell. Yes. <laughs> Give me the first name again. Well, Benji. I'm gonna let him say it. Proceeds Wazell, but I go by Wazell in my adult life. Yeah. Okay. Nice. So if you say Benji, I think you're from back home and right. you know me as a kid. <laughs> exactly. So, and, and your dad said that he thought you would grow into that name. Did you grow into it? Yeah, Wazell, I definitely grew into it mm -hmm. as I got older. Uh, okay. First, I thought it was weird. Uh -huh. You know, did right. you spell it Y-Z-E-L-L -L, and nobody could say it, mm -hmm. you know, so I didn't want to use it. Mm -hmm. But when I got to uh, my senior year, I mm -hmm. thought I wanted to change. Okay. And so I went in that year as Wazell. Mm -hmm. And then eventually uh, I put an apostrophe between the Y and the Z. Okay. So that people can say phonetically Wazell. You know what I like about that is um, something you just said, you know, when you got into your senior year. And, and that means that, you know, coming into it, you weren't that comfortable with the name. No. But as you grow, you get to know yourself, you get comfortable yeah. with who you, who you are. are. Yeah. So, and that is very important for people to understand. Until you get comfortable with who you are, yeah. you're not going to be happy with yourself. You're not going to be happy. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, tell us a little bit about um, what you have on the table. We're going to mix it all up. What you have on the That's table, good. why you're telling us about that. Uh, mm -hmm. And we are not cooking right now. We are talking. That's chatting. just talking. It's so, good yeah. yeah. What do you have on the table? Well, I brought some of my, uh, two of my favorite dishes okay. today that we're going to prepare later on. Uh -huh. But I brought some fresh uh, vegetables and herbs and products for us to look at. Uh, you can see the fresh mm -hmm. spinach here. Okay. This is a mixture of bell pepper, mm -hmm. zucchini, uh, broccoli, um, some And don't tell us what it's for. Don't, okay. tell, don't tell us. Of course, if you like meat. Also, I love carbs as well. Yeah. So I brought pasta. Yeah, me too. I love pasta <laughs> I love too. Pasta. Now, the important part. Mm -hmm. Is, yes. is you just cook this stuff at home or where do you cook this stuff? We want to we want to know. Where do you a cook? A little it? bit of both. I cook uh -huh. it at home and in my, in my professional life too at the restaurant. Okay, which restaurant? Um, right now it. I'm currently working at Mestizo Restaurant on Acadian. Okay. 20 okay. Clinton South Acadian. Uh -huh. uh, for those that know, um, my partner is Jim Diallis. Okay. And so um, I've been working really side by side with him now for three years. Okay. And before I worked in other places. Mm -hmm. um, and I would only help him when it came down to big events or catering jobs and things of that sort. So, are you a chef? A chef. Good question. Um, <clears throat> I can cook, but I don't call myself a chef at all. Why not? I, don't, I don't think I am a chef. Okay. I think I'm a good cook. I think of myself more as, um, you could say, Mr. Hospitality. Okay. Or restaurant tour, but I prefer probably Mr. Hospitality mm -hmm. because I, I think I'm all around. I can okay. definitely cook in the kitchen. I can mm -hmm. eat in the kitchen. I can prepare a dish. I can put together a, 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 a great event for you for your birthday, okay. for your holiday. I can make you feel welcome. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think that is all a part of it. I can run the business end of it. Okay. Um, but I think that what carries me through in this industry is the hospitality aspect of it. Of it all. Yeah. Okay. So speaking of carrying you through on it. Where did you begin? Did you always start out knowing you wanted to be in yeah, the hospitality industry? Not. Did not. Actually, I started out 
um, a little while back mm -hmm. at a Logan's Roadhouse. And okay. I was in West Monroe, Louisiana. Mm -hmm. And I was in college and I worked my way through school by working as a server there. Okay. And when I graduated, I have a degree actually in computer aided drafting and design technology. Okay. I went to work at a firm mm -hmm. in uh, Fort Beck and Davis and I hated it. Mm -hmm. I hated it because uh, I was in a cubicle doing these plans, working with these people, mm -hmm. and it just didn't, wasn't a good fit for me. Anymore. Now, let me cut you off there, mm -hmm. folks. And this, this is mainly for your parents and things like that out there. Because this is so true mm -hmm. in the restaurant industry. Yeah. If it's in you, that's something that you're going to want to do. So it's no matter you, yeah. what profession you do to please the parents, to even please yourself at that moment, thinking you should be doing something different, it's going to come out. And you have to follow, you follow that the, passion. The passion yeah. mm -hmm. Now, I think that you may can relate to this, too. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> my parents, they, my family was a, a family that kind of brought themselves up. Uh -huh. And they did not see working in a restaurant as a, as a thing to do. Right. You know, especially as an African American man, mm -hmm. you know, they like you don't work in a restaurant. That's not what you're going to be doing. You know, right. you know. Um, I found this as a family when right. I was in that world. Right. You know, which I, I like that too. Mm -hmm. And it allowed me to travel and learn stuff. Yeah. And I was definitely in a bubble, mm -hmm. a glass like a glass bubble, and I couldn't get out of that bubble. And so uh, I kept working, and I ended up moving to Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and I fell into another restaurant. And then I started working for Al Copeland. Okay. And when I worked for him, I kind of feel like it's pretty much saved my life. It was um, working in that environment gave me structure. Mm -hmm. He taught me hospitality. Okay. Um, I saw how hard he worked, even though we know him as Al Copeland. Right. He would come in the restaurants and work with the dishwashers mm -hmm. and on the line. Mm -hmm. And, and that's guests, huge. That was huge. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he taught us to respect that. You know? mm -hmm. He's, he told the dishwashers every day, you are the most important part of this business. You touch every guest. Each plate touches a guest. Yeah. And he made you feel valued. You know, mm -hmm. made you feel valued. And so when I started working in that environment, I started paying attention to how the restaurant ran, how things yeah. worked. So let's fast forward to where you are now, mm -hmm. taking that experience to present time. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Um, I carried that with me throughout my whole time, mm -hmm. and I felt like that's why I'm Mr. Hospitality, because even though I can do multiple things in this business, it all revolves around how you interact with people, yeah. how you make them feel, uh, can you bring them back, you know, mm -hmm. caring about them, mm -hmm. giving them something to remember and carry home with them, Yeah, to carry home with them. And so that's what I've been bringing with them, I believe okay. that, strongly. Well, folks, we're coming right back. We are cooking. We are going to find out more about Wiesel yeah. Williamson because this is very interesting. Okay. So we'll see you in a few. In a few. Welcome back to Southern Exposure. I'm Chef Celeste, and we are in the kitchen with Wiesel Williamson. Hey. So, and we're cooking right now. So, and it smells amazing. What are you making? I'm going to make us a sausage and shrimp andouille pasta. Mm. And something that I love is carbs and heavy cream. <laughs> <laughs> Everything in moderation, so yeah. it is okay. But what I love about the dish, what you're doing, folks, we are cooking in real time. So this is cooking while we're talking, and yeah. this dish is going to finish up while we're talking. This is not something we're going to cut away and come back to. So run through our ingredients. So this right here would be a chicken and andouille, I'm sorry, a shrimp and andouille pasta, not chicken. That um, works. Things so. that we have around the house every once in a while. I, mm -hmm. I like this dish because it's easy to do if uh, you come from work, see everybody mm -hmm. real quick. Okay. I expect the guests come over real quick. Um, and also look at the restaurant every once in a while too at Mestizo. And you know what I like about it? What's that? One pot. One, it's one pot. One pot, folks. It's definitely and one pot. And if you pot. just joined us, this is Southern Exposure. We are in the kitchen <laughs> with Wiesel Williamson. Yes. And um, tell us, a recap, what is in the pan? It's going to be, we're doing some jumbo shrimp. Mm -hmm. I used, I started out with a, some garlic. Okay. And some onions. Okay. With a little um, olive oil. Okay. And once I got that going, I put in my andouille sausage. Mm -hmm. And the juices started coming out. Yep. Once it to permeate throughout the pasta. Then I added in my shrimp and then topped it off with a little heavy cream, which I love as well. Carbs and heavy cream. That works. Can't go, can't go yeah. wrong with How that. How can you miss that? And I folks, know. heavy cream and a little bit of carbs, not gonna hurt too much. Hurt Everything too much. in moderation. So that's what I love. And you I know, like the about fact that I like to put my shrimp in 
the uh, cream because I it lets the that. shrimp release its juices and it mm -hmm. goes throughout the, the pasta dish. It makes right. it taste better. And I'm adding in some Cotiga cheese, not ah. Parmesan cheese, a little bit different. What's the difference? This is a Mexican cheese. Ah. It's a little bit more stronger, more pungent. Okay. And uh, but it also has a different flavor that goes throughout the pasta whenever you use it. Mm -hmm. Nice. Remember that's that, that Mexican folks. side. Um, yeah. Mestizo side, right there, I guess. So speaking of mestizos, and, and just kind of add in when you when you dump something yeah. in here, mm -hmm. what type of cuisine is that? Uh, mestizo is a mix. It mm -hmm. is a mix of the uh, Mexican cuisine. I'm just going to reach across in front of you right there. Okay. Hands are clean. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a mix of the uh, Mexican culture mm -hmm. and the Cajun culture. Jim's okay. father is from Mexico. Okay. His mother is from is Cajun French. Okay. So mestizo means mixed blood. Okay. And um, one of the things I really do enjoy uh, that drew me towards Mestizo into Jim actually mm -hmm. was the fact that he embraced his heritage because Mestizo uh, naturally is not, it's not a, a, a nice term, mm -hmm. it's a derogatory term. Ah. So people feel like, why don't you want to be called a Mestizo or a Mestiza? Mm -hmm. You know, um, not pure. Okay. That's kind of what it means. Okay. But he embraced his heritage, embraced his culture, and that's how we get Mestizo. Ah. So you learn something new. Mm -hmm. So what do you do over at Mestizo? What do you bring to the table? I think that, at the, at, well, I know at Mestizo, what I come in there with mm -hmm. is I have a love of doing events okay. and bringing people together. Again, Mr. Hospitality. Right. So I was helpful in bringing that, elevating that game mm -hmm. uh, there. And now we, because of that, we are doing uh, weddings, rehearsal dinners now. Uh -huh. um, we have a lot of birthday parties that we do, corporate mm -hmm. events that we do as well. Mm -hmm. um, my past experience in working at the Lyceum yeah. being downtown where we did events there, mm -hmm. working at the Hotel Indigo, mm -hmm. and working downtown in general where I was at Capital Grill helped me uh, learn how to uh, take care of different sets and different groups yeah. of people and things. That's one thing that I do miss about being downtown was it was always a mix of something going on. Yeah, and that's something folks, um, Oh, that good. may not know as much about Baton Rouge coming in if you don't really live here, but Baton Rouge has a lot going on. It does have a lot. So, you know, it's a destination spot. We have some awesome chefs, mm -hmm. cooks, the hospitality yeah. is on point. So, um, and that's, that's what I enjoy. What you just said was something that I think too is important is that hospitality can be a career. Yeah. And people don't think about that or realize that or understand that a lot of times. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a career choice. It doesn't have to always be something that you went to school for. Right. Got a degree in and learn. So you said something off camera. Uh, you said that the restaurant industry saved your life. Yeah, I definitely like it saved my life. Um, How do you feel that? I didn't have a sense of direction mm -hmm. when I got involved in this restaurant world. Mm -hmm. I um, definitely did a lot of moving around and a lot of partying, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. So I was good at having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was good at creating a good time <laughs> as well. And along the way, I uh, started working with um, Al Copeland and okay. um, Chiste Bistro, and it played me structure. Uh, it gave me a sense of family. Uh -huh. It made me feel, it actually made me feel that this industry was important. Yeah. Okay. And so I didn't feel like I was lost. And that's the one thing. Food can bring cultures together. Mm -hmm. It can cross uh, language barriers. Yes, it can. It's a peace offering. Yeah. There are so many components yeah. to just a plate of food. A plate of food, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, definitely. Um, one, I, I, I watch a TV show, Blue Bloods. And it is, Love it. Uh, you watch it too. <laughs> I like the ending, but I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah. What is your favorite My part? My favorite part of that whole thing is really is the fact that the family comes together mm -hmm. and have a family meal so on Sundays every week, no matter what, nobody misses a beat. Mm -hmm. And I really, really like that. Um, and you know, they, they do it around the dinner table. Yeah. So on this meal right here, which looks delicious and we're going to taste in a minute, Give me three words of how you think a person should feel when they take a bite of this. Like home. It's a, that's home. There you go. We are going to taste like home <laughs> in a minute. We'll be back. I'm going to speed up a little bit and go okay. ahead and plate this here. That'll work. Yes. That if you want to add an extra layer, you can always do your, some, um, some spinach with that if you want to mm -hmm. add an extra layer. But we're gonna just do this here now. We're gonna add on our shrimp. Okay, I'll hold that. Oh, perfect. Yeah, give me something to do. Give you a little help here. Yeah. And we'll top it off with some green onions. Okay. This would be great to go with some chimichurri. Mm-hmm. 
Or you can do a little hot sauce with that on the side if you want to. Mm -hmm. Or even that sauce I was cooking with, that you can use that little bit sprinkled across the top. It's great. Okay. Let's put some green onions on top. Yeah. And I mean, you got your color. It's appetizing. All right. It's filling. That's your alternative to carbs and pasta. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to put that over there. We have two beautiful dishes here. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, these are amazing. Yeah, thank you. We're going to give these a try. So, where can people contact you? Well, you can contact me via Mestizo, actually. Um, okay. These, uh, my email address is wazel at mestizorestaurant.com. Mm -hmm. Um, what that's about one Facebook? Way. Facebook, my page is Wazell, even on Instagram, is Wazell underscore Williamson. Uh -huh. And um, all my pictures, usually you can see me as in some kind of form cooking or doing box meals or something related to the food industry or restaurants. So that works. Morning. Now, I have to ask a very important question. Yes, ma'am. What did you season this with? You know, mm -hmm. I definitely used one of my favorite seasons right yes. here. It's so good right here. Miss Chef Celeste is the black pepper and garlic, I think it is. Yep. Yep. And it brings out that pasta so well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, you. Have you tried it yet? I'm going to give it a it's try now. Try. Let me put some on a fork for you. <laughs> okay. Guys, you Thank can you. try it later, but we're going to get the recipe to you so you can try it at home also. We, you should have been taking notes. Mm. What do you say? Good. All right. Well, thank you. I also want to thank my other guest, Michael Foster, for that great interview. And um, what, what do you say about that? Yeah. Then we're going to, I'm going to try this one here in a minute, but we have our regular, we have our carb free. Mm -hmm. So give it a try. Check us out next time on Southern Exposure. I'm Chef Celeste, and I thank you, and I'll see you next time.